You guys want to know something funny? So before the news came out that the Denver Broncos were trading for Russell Wilson, this segment was initially supposed to be the Denver Broncos top five quarterback options for the 2022 NFL season. And then as soon as I get done recording that, the news breaks that the Denver Broncos have traded for nine-time Pro Bowl quarterback Russell Wilson. And for Denver Broncos fans right now, like you have to be incredibly happy and you have to be having a range of emotions right now because Broncos fans have been through a lot today. Like first, earlier today, you had the news that came up that Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay agreed to terms on a new contract that would keep Aaron Rodgers and Green Bay. And of course, you had a lot of disheartened Broncos fans who were disappointed, sad that they weren't able to acquire Aaron Rodgers because Nathaniel Hackett, the new head coach of Denver, formerly was the offensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers, and him and Aaron Rodgers had a pretty solid relationship. So many Broncos fans were hoping that, you know, Nathaniel Hackett would be enough to get Aaron Rodgers to Denver along with, you know, giving up other things in the trade. However, you aren't able to get Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers stays in Green Bay. So then 10 minutes after that news comes out, another rumor comes out that Denver has shifted all their attention on trying to trade for Russell Wilson. And of course, a lot of non-Denver Broncos fans are laughing in the comment section. You have a lot of Broncos fans who are saying, stop playing for my emotions. You got Seattle Seahawks fans, of course, saying, Broncos, just give up. It's not going to happen. And then, an hour later, breaking news. The Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks have come to agreement in a trade for star quarterback Russell Wilson. And I'm just looking at my phone... Like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of shocked because remind you, I just got done recording a segment, you know, the top five realistic QB options for Denver and Russell Wilson wasn't on that. And I didn't think that Denver was going to be able to make this happen. So you have to give a lot of props to the general manager of Denver and the front office people who are involved in making this trade come to life. And I don't know if Denver and Seattle already previously had negotiations of a Russell Wilson trade because it seemed like this trade happened pretty diligently and it happened pretty fast because it seemed like Denver had all their eyes set on Aaron Rodgers. So after they weren't able to get him, it's like they just snapped the finger and they had a deal for Russell Wilson already planned out so it seems like Denver already had their quarterback options laid out who they were going to target and they already pretty much had ideal trade packages planned out it seems like because it seems like this deal happened pretty fast now like I said I don't know if Denver and Seattle were already in talks of a Russell Wilson trade but you look at what both teams are receiving in this trade. For the Denver Broncos, we already know they get Russell Wilson and they get a fourth round pick in return. However, the Seattle Seahawks, what they are receiving, they are receiving two first round picks from the Denver Broncos, two second round picks from the Denver Broncos, the Denver Broncos fifth round selection, and they receive quarterback Drew Locke, defensive lineman Shelby Harris, and tight end Noah Fent, all in exchange for quarterback Russell Wilson. And this is a phenomenal, phenomenal trade for both teams, in my opinion. Now, of course, Seattle Seahawks fans are like, JT, we're losing Russell Wilson. We're losing one of the greatest quarterbacks ever played. We're losing one of the best quarterbacks of the past decade, which is true. Now, Seattle enters the quarterback market. Now, who's going to be their starting quarterback for next season? Because I'm pretty, like, I see why they traded for Drew Locke. Drew Locke would be a pretty good fit because it looks like Seattle, they want to be a team who likes to air the football down the field, take a lot of deep shots. You definitely can do that with, you know, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. However, you do have to improve the offensive line, but you do have draft capital that can 
help you improve that offensive line. You also have draft capital that can help you improve the defensive side of the football, which is something that you struggle with. You know, like, are you going to get a corner? Are you going to get another pass rusher? Like, what are you going to do to help improve the defense? You know, what are you going to do to help improve the offensive end? And also, what if Seattle wants to draft the quarterback? What if Seattle wants to draft one of the top QBs in the upcoming 2022 NFL draft? So there are multiple ways that Seattle can go about, you know, what they use or how they use their draft picks that they acquire, then you get Drew Locke, okay? Like, if you got to start Drew Locke this year, that's going to be really interesting because Drew Locke has a very good supporting cast around him, at least when it comes from a skill position standpoint. Off the line is a huge concern because we know that Russell Wilson has pretty much been the heart and soul keeping that Seattle Seahawks offense together, so with Drew Locke, I'm eager to see, you know, like how is Seattle's offensive mentality going to change? How's their philosophy on the offensive end going to change? Because Seattle pretty much for over the last three seasons has pretty much said, you know what, Russell, we're just going to allow you to do your thing. You're our offense. And that was it. You know, like what was the strategy outside of Russell Wilson? So now with Drew Locke at quarterback, if he does end up being a starting quarterback, you know, like. What are they going to do with them? Is is he going to just be a long-term backup? Was he just there because Denver had to, you know, get rid of him and somebody had to take him and Seattle was willing to take him for the additional draft picks? Like, how is Seattle going to use Drew Locke? Like, do they see Drew Locke as a legitimate starting quarterback or do they just view Drew Locke as somebody who they had to get for the trade to go through and get what they wanted? So this is a really intriguing trade for Denver when you look at what this trade means for them in terms of the Super Bowl discussion. Now you do give up Noah Fent, who is a really underrated tight end. And Seattle does need a tight end. So this is definitely going to take off one of their team needs. Now for Denver, you automatically are in the Super Bowl conversation with Russell Wilson because many Denver Broncos fans for at least over the last two years have been saying all we are are a quarterback away from being a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And you haven't really had a legitimate quarterback ever since Peyton Manning retired and won that Super Bowl and set off to the sunset in 2015. And you've still been searching. If you've, and you've been through several quarterbacks, so now you have your quarterback situation answered. And now, where does Denver rank, where does Denver rank in the Super Bowl hierarchy? They're definitely top three. Like, they're definitely up there with Kansas City, who is also in their division, and the Buffalo Bills. Now you have that quarterback. You already have a pretty good wide receiving core with Jerry Judy, um, Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler. Like, you are loaded at wide receiver. You have a pretty good offensive line. Your defense is pretty good, although you do need to improve in certain aspects and certain areas on that defense. Like, the Denver Broncos, with head coach Nathaniel Hackett, as of right now, have entered the Super Bowl conversation. And I'm really intrigued in seeing the further moves that the Denver Broncos make as we progress throughout the offseason. But Denver Broncos fans, you got your wish. You finally have a franchise quarterback. And now, what's next for Denver? And also, like, how does this affect the rest of the AFC West? Because, like, now, like, who who are you guys going to have to win the AFC West? Because the AFC West was already a crowded division before this trade. Now, you have Russell Wilson. You got Patrick Mahomes. You got Derek Carr. Like, this division, you got Justin Herbert. Like, this division is stacked. Like, this division essentially has three top 10 quarterbacks. Maybe potentially five. Well, maybe potentially three top five quarterbacks, depending on who you ask. Like, some people may look at, you know, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, and um, Russell Wilson as being top five QBs. But without a doubt, you have three top 10 QBs. Maybe you have the vision of top 10 QBs because some people may argue and say that Derek Carr is a top 10 QB. But I'm not going to go that far. But you guys get the point. The AFC West is a juggernaut. Like, all four teams now have 
their quarterback situations taken care of. You know, the Raiders have Derek Carr. Now the Broncos were the only team missing who didn't have their franchise QB. Now they have it in Russell Wilson. Now you have a division with Derek Carr, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, and Russell Wilson. Like, I'm really excited to see how the AFC West is going to pan out. So this is it for this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. Make sure that you go ahead, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're watching on YouTube. Also, make sure that you check out the JT Sports Podcast available on all podcasting platforms. Every single video that's uploaded on the channel is available in audio format on every single podcasting platform. Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you get your your podcasts from, the JT Sports Podcast is available. All you got to do is type in the JT Sports Podcast in any podcasting service and it should pop up. Or you can go down to the description down below, scroll down a little bit, and it will take you to the podcasting links for my Apple and Spotify podcast. Make sure that you guys go ahead, check that out, leave a five-star review. And if you enjoyed the episode, make sure that you leave a like, share it with your friends, family, and acquaintance members. And I appreciate you guys for listening to this episode of the JT Sports Podcast.